Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about how much um, chamber size can affect flow. Now, this is similar to a video that I might have done quite a while ago where what I did was I asked the question, well, how much does milling affect flow? This is essentially the same thing in a way. Um, so let me explain. What we have here are two heads. Both of them are the same port design the really the biggest difference between the two is the chamber size. These are an AFR 210cc head. This one's part number is part number 1050 and this one's part number 1054. Now, when you listen to that, you're saying, oh my gosh, you've got two different heads. Of course they flow differently. No, let me tell you what they are. Part number 1050 is actually a 75cc chamber. Um, the part number 1054 is a 65cc chamber, but there were some things done. This customer actually asked, said, hey, um, is there any way I can get a 72cc chamber? And I said, yes, I can. He wanted to know if I could open up a 65cc chamber to do it. And you can, it's just not ideal. I said, it'd probably be better if we ordered the 75ccs and had those milled to 72ccs. That only takes off 3ccs. So in fact, these are done to 72ccs. That's one of the benefits about ordering from an AFR dealer versus um, Summit or Jags or something. And I am an AFR dealer and is, and I might be partial, but because you can do more custom things that you Summit and Jags will do it, but then you're waiting as long as guys like me. So it's really easy to get the uh, in stock stuff like 75 CC and 65 CC chambers. But if you want anything like special, it, it's barely best to go through a dealer. And even I'd love to sell you regular ones too. But anyway, getting back to it, he wanted 72 cc's for just simply chamber size. The way they do that is they'll take a 75 cc chamber, this one, and they will flat mill, and they'll take off three cc's and gets it to here. So this one's actually 72 cc chamber. This customer, I'm going to end up porting these heads, so it's not a big deal. But what he wanted, he wanted a 55 cc chamber. So he's actually got a couple options, which you might notice. These are steam holes for the 400. AFR will do that. I do not do these. <clears throat> I have these done by a factory because it's, it's a pain in the rear for me. Um, so he wanted 55 cc chambers. Now that's a huge difference. So they start off at 65 to go to 55 cc's. That's 10 cc change as opposed to these are only three cc's. So because of that, it's a lot more milling and it's done in a different way. So, and I'm gonna show you flow sheets before, with this head, with the big chamber and the small head after uh, as well. So you could see how much difference it is, but I wanna talk about why there is a difference and how they got there. First thing you need to know is a little bit about milling. The way most heads are milled is called flat milling. In other words, I'm gonna go over to my mill. This is the mill and it's got a cutter head up there, as you can see, and essentially, on a flat mill, we just mill just flat part across the head. So back to the head to kind of show you. That head sits perfectly parallel and the cutter head just goes across this and that's called a flat mill. Most of what we do is that. So if you're getting your heads refreshed, that's exactly what we do. We just flat mill across that. And we're only gonna move, remove a certain amount of, um, on a regular milling, you're just a little bit just to clean up the surface. Typically, if you cut off six thousandths, you remove one cc of chamber size. So if in order for him to get from the 75 to the 72, they had a flat mill about 18 thousandths, which is not a ton, but it's not light either. But so 18, it's just pretty, pretty easy. The flat milling has a bunch of benefits. One of the benefits is really it's not messing up any of the geometry stuff or anything else. So when you flat mill, pretty much you're just bringing all the piston, the valves and everything's just come down. All the spacing and everything stays the same. Several people ask, well, what's this do about the intake alignment? When you flat mill, the only thing that happens is you're just dropping the intake port down. So if your intake was sitting here before your intake manifold, it would now sit here. So, but in typical, most of them are undersized anyway, so they're smaller. So when you drop them down, as long as you port match it, you're fine. It's not, a, not an issue at all. That is not the same for angle mill, which we'll get to in just a minute. So flat milling, the most I've ever taken off, and usually it's circle track stuff because they have rules that say, hey, you can only remove, uh, you can only flat mill. The most I've ever done is 60 thousandths on a flat mill on a small block Chevy. So in that case, they had 76 cc chambers, so we flat milled and got it down. However, that's on a cast iron head. The, the disadvantage to flat milling is this. 
you can only take off so much material. And here's the reason why. Flat milling, you're flat out removing this much material. So you can only remove so much before there's not enough for that to seal at the bottom of the intake port. That's one. The other thing is this. If you flat mill too much, right there's the aluminum, you'll be way into the seat itself. So you'll start cutting way into the seat, which the other one's already kind of cut into it, but nothing like, if you were to flat mill, it would have been a, a lot more. So flat mill removes, it doesn't remove as much material as angle milling. So because of that, you can cut way into the seat and then it's it's not ideal. So disadvantage to that uh, flat milling is you can't remove as much material, um, but all the rocker arm stuff stays pretty much um, the same. Intake alignment's pretty much good. Now to the other one. This one is a mixture. This was done on is angle milling. And what they did on that, instead of sitting the head perfectly parallel when they're cutting it, what they did is they raised up this side, the chamber side. So this part sticks up higher than this part. So it's at an angle when it's in the mill. So because of that, the mill starts taking off more from here than it does from here. And by doing that, I'm removing more of the chamber and not as much from here. So because of that, you can remove more material by milling and get the chamber size down quite a bit. Disadvantages. When you do that, you're changing the entire angle of the head. Now, before someone thinks this, because I thought this when I didn't know anything either, you cannot really alter the angle of the valve of the head enough. So you cannot go from a 23 to 18 degree by angle milling. It's, it's not impossible, but what you end up doing is you end up milling on just this side alone almost a quarter of an inch. So you end up with nothing really here. So it's not possible easily um, to go, in case you're wondering, to go from a 23 to 18. Really, you can, best you can hope for is a 23 to maybe 22 and a half to 22. That's it. So one degree. And that's really pushing it. The disadvantages of the angle milling is it changes every piece of alignment. So because you're rolling the head itself, all the valves themselves get rolled. So the... Um, everything that has to do with anything gets changed. So the valves get rolled. And because of that, this, this face here rolls too. So you have to then, not only are you milling this part now, so you're on a flat mill, you only have to do that and you're done. Angle mill, you'll be milling this. Then you have to correct the intake face because it's not going to seal. Because you've, you've tilted it, so it might seal at the bottom and not at the top. I might have that vice versa. So you have to mill the intake face to get it to sit correctly and one more thing all the bolt holes are right now because it's flat milled they are parallel to the deck when you angle mill you've rolled that so all the bolt holes are also rolled so then third step you have to do is come back and spot face each and every one of the head bolt holes to get them parallel to the deck otherwise when the bolt or stud clamps down it's not going to sit flush. It's, so it's a lot more work. And in some cases, you actually have to slot the hole itself. So this whole hole here, because the hole got tilted, the bolt or stud will not go through, so you have to actually slot it. Point being is, it's a considerable amount of work. So I actually don't ever angle mill. I have it done from the factory. So like, for instance, this one is angle milled. That's how they got to 55 cc's. And I'll happily have them do it in the factory because there's a bunch of different ways that they do it. First, they'll mill it first before putting in the seats and stuff sometimes, so it makes all the rocker arm geometry fine because it's added after, um, which is way better than milling, having everything put in and then milling. Then you gotta correct a bunch of stuff. So in their case, it's much faster for them to do. It's much worse when it's already good and done, and then you gotta do it, it's much more work. So in this case, as you could tell how much is build, milled off, Notice here, there. This has all been smoothed off. Now they put there to tell you how much they got down. So they see it's 55. This says they removed, looks like 63, it's upside down. 63 and 20. So what they did is they took 63,000 single mil. So it was 63 from here to zero to here, then 20 mil flat. So they did a combination of both milling procedures. They of course then had to touch up this and all the bolt holes as well. That's how they got to 55 cc's. And you can still see this is thinner than that. So what's it got to do with flow, though? Because that's really what you're asking, right? 
Well, here's what it did. And uh, you could see it on this one pretty easy. So look at my pointer here. You see these lines in the deck? And you're like, oh, they did a crappy job milling. No, they didn't. You can see it there. You can see these lines here. What that happens is that blade you saw on my cutter, it's sweeping. So it's coming this way and it's cutting aluminum. And then it hits here. This is the steel insert. And that steel stays on there and it sweeps around. That's why you have these lines. That's where it's hitting the, the seat. And you can see it. See how it's... Been, oh, camera doesn't focus. You can see there, right there is the seat. And you can see where it's been cut into it. Now, what's this got to do with flow is this. Excuse me for a second. There we go. This is the top cut. So here's your seat. This is the top cut. And then it goes in the chamber. All this is kind of like in the divergent cone of flow. And you can see it from here. When you angle mill, it's gone. That's your seat. You've got a hint or Nat's ass of top cut left in this region. So what that does is it actually hurts low lift flow. And you'll see in a second the flow numbers. The exhaust, it really won't affect as much. You can tell how much has been removed. Because it still has its top cut, it's not that big a deal. On the intake, it's a huge deal because as you can tell, you've lost just about everything. Now, it's still going to seal because the seat area is still underneath the deck and you're good. So, but you lose this top cut, which you can see, and that hurts flow. So, how much though? Oh, something else to think about too before you think about milling itself in general. When you mill, flat mill, you can subtract the same amount. So if I mill 60 thousandths off, you lost 60 thousandths of piston to valve clearance. On angle mill, you could lose more or less. So just something to keep in mind. So even though you can get your chamber size down, you're also reducing your piston to valve clearance. Something to think about. Now, how does it affect flow? Well, let's take a peek at the flow numbers. Sorry about the delay, I don't wanna do two takes. Yep, here we go. Both of these are flowed on a 430 bore. This is the 72 cc chamber. It's really 60, 75, it milled to 72, remember? And this is the 55, same valve too. Um, so as you can tell, 75 is much better at one. It's about 10 CFM better at two, about 10 CFM at three. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit closer at four, but it's still a ways away. So it's uh, about six and it's about 12 there at five, it's down. 6 CFM down at 6, and then it starts catching at the upper ones. So, well, kind of. It's down 1 CFM at 7. Uh, it's still down 6 CFM at 8. 9, it's even worse. And I didn't go to 1 on this because it hit the retainer or hit the seal. But as you can tell, it's, it's down, and it's largely due to that. When you remove the top cut, even if it's only on just a section, the air can't roll out as much as it should, and that hurts it. The other thing that they kind of hurt it is they also have to drop the valve job down just a little bit so it still seals because of all the milling and it leaves it a little bit of edge and this looks worse than what it is. That's not that bad, but it's probably hurting one CFM. All the rest of the loss comes from that. The exhaust flow, it also lost some. So you see it's down about six there, down two, down two, down five, down seven, down two, down about four you get the idea so it's down pretty much the whole way on the exhaust too and like i said that's just a little bit because of that it's not as bad as as you could tell because you're only losing a few cfm on the exhaust but you lose way more on the intake anyway i probably overwhelmed you gave you way too much information but i thought i'd show you um how milling or a smaller chamber size can affect it because this is a huge swing so, I mean, you think about it, you're almost 10 cc difference between the chamber sizes. In general, most people just want it down to, you know, 62 or something usually about it. But this is pretty extreme. So I don't think you'll see it in all scenarios, but if you're um, wanting something this extreme, you can kind of see it. So don't think this is going to happen if you did a 68 to 64. Probably not. But huge swings and heavy angle mills cause that. So... Anyway, before someone also asks, is, oh, it must take out a ton of material here. It's, the deck's getting too thin. Nah, their decks are so thick that it ain't going to affect ceiling at all. Just letting you know. Oh, and you might be worrying about that too. Oh, it's affect ceiling. To this day, I've yet to have a head gasket not seal because of that. 
So, and there's nothing, by the way, I know you're like, well, AFR should do a better job of getting this to, no. If you have anybody that has any knowledge of milling, when it hits the two different materials, it causes that. The only solution is to redo the valve job, drop it down. So you got a hint of aluminum here, so it looks the whole way. But I've never seen this not seal up because of this in my day. Not saying it hasn't happened, I just haven't seen it. Anyway, a little bit longer of a video. Um, you guys remember, I'm no Superman, you guys take care.